Welcome to Patent Pod Chat with noted inventor and patent attorney Chris Majorana. Each week, Chris answers your questions on patents, trademarks, and inventions. Now, here's Chris Majorana. At some point, I remember you told me that after you file a patent application, the the patent office takes a while before they respond with a with an office action. H- how long was that again, Chris? There's no set time that the patent office mails the first office action, but they did make a commitment to what we call the 14-month rule that happened after the AIA was passed and after the patent reform earlier than that. So we moved from the the patent term of being 17 years from when a patent issues to 20 years from when you file. So at that point, they wanted to say that the difference between those two terms was what the patent office's goal was. So to get your patent to issue in three years after you file, they figured you have to get a first action around 14 months or by 14 months. So if they take longer than 14 months, the difference in time gets added to your patent term adjustment, which we talked about in another podcast. So it's good that they committed to a time, and it's good that you get extra time on your term if they go over that. That's a long time before you hear anything from the patent office. What happens if they lose the file? How, how do you know something went wrong? That's more of an issue in the old school when everything was by paper mail. So you'd file through the, the post office system. It's old stuff, but if you followed their system of using a priority mail service, then you got a postcard back. So we get all these little postcards mailed to us, and those postcards would usually have the uh, serial number of a file on there. And then we had things that we could do to make sure that the patent office was processing things. So that that was the old school. Now we file almost everything electronically. So then we immediately get what's called a uh you get a filing receipt that's mailed to you that's called the official filing receipt we abbreviate that just to call it ofr uh on the ofr it says here's your your filing date you're granted a filing date and you have possibly a request by the patent office to cure any defects you get to look over the continuity that That's what we talked about when we had the continuation application discussion. The continuity is your priority date back to an earlier case. But even before the filing receipt, you get an electronic confirmation that the application was filed. So you get a a serial number and you get a confirmation like right off the bat. So things are fairly modern when it comes to all that. Seems like a lot of things to check, though. That's right. We have an unbelievable amount of paperwork. Sometimes I think of that scene in The Matrix when Neo asks for, you know, guns, lots of guns, and like these racks of guns go flying out at at uh, Adam. I, I feel like that's how the paperwork is here. We have just paperwork everywhere, but that's what we do. We cut through the paperwork. How much do you charge for reviewing the official filing receipt? We really don't charge anything for a normal review. That's all what we cover in the the filing of a patent application. So we work it into that that flat fee schedule that we talked about in another podcast. Um, If we have to do a follow-up to cure a defect, like sometimes the like something spelled wrong or there's some weird typo, we might have a small just transactional fee for that. But we we try to be you know, an efficient patent law firm and keep those kind of small things to a minimum. And if we do things up front where we do as many things electronically as possible, then these old school typos don't don't really even happen anymore because they hold the information right from our electronic documents. Is there anything else on the OFR that needs checking? And we have a checklist internally that we run through. We want to make sure the inventor's name is spelled correctly, the title of the invention is spelled correctly. There's an entity status of the applicant, and that's either large entity, small entity, or micro entity. 
you know, we discussed that in another uh, interview that we can take a look at if you'd like. There's a customer number that's on a filing receipt, and that helps organize things at the patent office. And a customer number is probably something I'll write down, and we can do a whole nother pod chat about that down the road. Thank you for listening to Patent Pod Chat with noted inventor and patent attorney Chris Majorana. Join us next time as Chris answers your questions on patents, trademarks, and inventions.